A reader lives a thousand lives. This is a quote by George R. R. Martin, who is author of great books including The Game of Thrones. And I, for one, most certainly agree with his statement, because what it says is the following. Reading allows us to immerse in extraordinary stories, in places we have never seen before, during time periods we have yet to encounter. Flying, breathing underwater, wizardry, even talking to gods, all can be reality in a book. And that is something truly magical. Think of the stories you know, the fairy tales, how beautiful they can be, how epic they can be. Think of your dreams, your goals, a utopian place where all of it can be true. A book allows you to go to these places. But what if we could carry out the stories we read? What if we could live what we dream of? If we could reach the stars and beyond? I believe we can. I believe that each and every one of us has the power to achieve their biggest goals in life and to reach the stars. And to illustrate this, I want to tell you a story. It's the story of an ordinary young boy who's six years old. Picture yourself during that age. What were you like? Maybe funny, brave, maybe even scared. You were certainly innocent and you didn't have any deadlines to meet, that's for sure. This boy is just like that. And on his seventh birthday, his whole family has gathered to celebrate another year he's been on Earth. They eat cake, tell stories and have a good time. And when it is time for presents, the boy is the personification of joy itself. However, there's one gift that is, it isn't really what he has expected. Because his uncle approaches him and gives him a book. It's a quite big book and on top of it it says, Children Encyclopedia. Confused, the boy of course thanks his uncle, hiding his disappointment, and turns to the rest of his presents. See, he doesn't look at the book for days. Until a few weeks later, he opens it for the very first time. And soon he finds pleasure in all the interesting things he finds in it. He learns that lightning is faster than thunder. He learns that the world we walk upon is somehow round. And he learns that the moon is so far away, it would take 80,000 hours to walk there if we would never stop to walk. That would be the same as nine full years of walking. But there's one thing that fascinates him more than any other. And that's on the first few pages, an illustration of the continent of Africa. On it, there are drawn animals and diamonds and the Kilimanjaro, the biggest mountain in all of Africa. And immediately, he falls in love. And he decides, one day I'm going to see that place. See the lions and zebras and elephants, meet the people that live there and climb the Kilimanjaro. And so, he goes and approaches his dad and asks daddy, during summer, could we go to Africa? He said, well, where do you want to go? And he says, well, there's this mountain. I'd like to see it. He says, go look up where the mountain is. And then the boy goes, does some research, finds out it's between Tanzania and Kenya, comes back and says, well, dad, the mountain is in Tanzania. Could we please go there? And the dad, of course, he chuckles. He says, well, it doesn't matter where it is in Africa. We can't go there. That's it. Uh, but our boy is smart. Because he knows if his dad says no, his mom might say yes. <laughs> but even his mother says no. And if a mom says no, that's a certain no. <laughs> so he realizes that he won't be able to go this summer or any summer soon. But he knows that one day when he's old enough, he will most certainly go there and see the place. He keeps dreaming. So fast forward to 10 years later. Our boy, now a young man, finds himself on a plane. And believe it or not, that very plane is headed towards Tanzania. Excitement, nervousness, joy, all these feelings go through his body. For he has proven his parents wrong and is about to see the place that he has dreamt of for such a long time. When the plane finally lands, it is evening, the air outside is warm, and a slight breeze draws across the airport. Our protagonist has made it. He's in Tanzania. He will spend two whole weeks there, 
And these week, two weeks, he will spend with the students of a school called Moringa Sokoina Secondary School. With these students, he will share his room, he will share food, they will cook together, play games, and sometimes they will even study. And so he learns these people, he gets to know them, and a bond of friendship forms. And through this bond, he realizes that the people he thought would be so different are fundamentally the same. They have the same fears, the same jokes, the same concerns, and the same goals. And so the people he thought would be so different on the other side of the world are the same. And he thinks, if this is true for this place, it should be true for everywhere on this planet. And time passes, he gets to know their culture, their traditions, he learns a bit of their language. And on the last day, they decide to spend the night outside. So they go out, sit on the grass, and look towards the sky. And what they see is the night sky of Tanzania. There are more stars than he has ever seen before. So beautiful, so bright, he cannot believe his own eyes. It is the night sky of Tanzania that changes his view of the world profoundly. Because there are multiple reasons. For one, he thought it would be impossible to go there and he has managed it. He's uh, overcome a lot of difficulties. He had to apply to a new school, learn a new language, and he has done all these things just to see this place. And the second is, the people he thought would be so different are actually the same. And now he believes that all people are equal, regardless of culture, tradition, religion, race, he believes these are just subtleties that add to the diversity of humanity. And so he looks towards the sky and says, I made it. I've made my biggest dream come true. And if you ask me how, I, how do I know all of this, well, my name is Osan Chen and I had the extraordinary privilege of going to Tanzania last summer. And I felt very lucky to have all these experiences. So if I come back to my initial quote that a reader lives a thousand lives, yes, most certainly it is true, but every single one of us has the power to make these stories we, we read come all true. And if you ask me now, well, what's the future going to be like? I say, if we establish a global perspective that tolerates our differences, and that involves acceptance of diversity, the future is, it is going to be whatever we want it to be. And so, with the words of Harvard graduate Donovan Livingston, no, the sky is not the limit. It is only the beginning. Lift off. Thank you. <laughs>